Salutations everyone, Shadow Taurus here. Welcome back to another exciting video to quench your thirst for Naruto power scaling knowledge. Today we are embarking on an exhilarating journey through the pages of Naruto lore as we pit two iconic characters against each other, Minato and Kakuzu. Now, before we dive into the heart of the matter, I wanted to address some recent chatter in the online Naruto community. There's been quite a stir on Twitter courtesy of a fellow power scaling YouTuber known as Noodles, and he's been making some bold claims about Kakuzu who he believes would outmatch Minato Namikaze. But hold your pitchforks because I respectfully beg to differ, and in this video we're going to be dissecting the power scaling of these two meticulously and without bias. And to ensure a fair and comprehensive analysis, we'll be examining both Minato and Kagazu at their absolute peak of their abilities. For Minato, this will be around the time of the Nine Tails attack, and then for Kakuzu, this will be about early Shippuden during his fight with Team Kakashi. These two characters offer a treasure trove of insight when it comes to power scaling in the Naruto universe, so my dear viewers, grab some popcorn, find a comfy spot, and prepare to be enlightened and entertained as we delve into the intricacies of the world of Naruto power scaling. So without further ado, let's get started with this video with some Kakuzu power scaling. Now, when it comes to speed to inverse Naruto speed scaling, it's not the hardest thing in the world. For Kakuzu, he has pretty consistent speed scaling. In terms of speed, he should scale above the likes of Kakashi and early Shippuden, as he does have multiple feats putting him above this Kakashi. Though, this does not mean he's a lot faster than him, as Kakashi was able to intercept his lightning heart while Kakuzu was fused with it. And this was also a tired Kakashi, so Kakuzu should be faster, but not by much. Now, a lot of people seem to think Kakuzu is hilariously faster than Kakashi due to him managing to stand up right as Kakashi was being charged Hidan with his lightning blade and kick him away. But we know for this technique you need to build up speed to get faster, and it's difficult to react to things around you because of how fast you're going, thus I don't necessarily think this counts as a feat as it's pretty circumstantial. He also scales above base Naruto here, which is consistent as Kakashi should also be faster than base Naruto here. As a member of the Akatsuki, Kakuzu has some very interesting statements and feats. The guidebooks give a statement where all Akatsuki member duos are capable of taking down a Jinchuriki. This is support in the series when Kakuzu is able to tank a strike from the two tails Jinchuriki Yugito in her transformed state, a Kanoichi who is stated to have mastered her tail beast, making her a perfect Jinchuriki. Kakuzu is then able to subdue her without taking any notable damage to himself, meaning he took her down without much stress or tax. But what a lot of people misunderstand about this feat is they try to take it as a strength feat when it's more of a durability feat as he doesn't actually stop the paw but more so tanks it. But he still took down Yukito so he should still scale above her. Kakuzu can then further enhance his physicality with his Earth Spear Jutsu which allowed him to tank Choji's massive human boulder without taking any damage. Though it is noted by both Kakashi and Kakuzu that lightning release would be able to pierce through it because it's weak to lightning. Now, a lot of people are under the assumption that Kakuzu is the strongest member of the Akatsuki due to his feats, though this is blatantly not the case. On top of that, his Jutsu is not as strong as people think as Kakashi with two Shidoris were able to block a large lightning release attack from Transform Kakuzu, but we'll get back to that later. I will also briefly cover intelligence in this section, and for Kakuzu, he has a pretty good feat of being able to figure out Shikamaru's plan that he's putting into motion, so that's pretty good, but where does Minato scale? Now, when it comes to Minato, he has quite a number of fun showings. One of his best showings is against Killer B and A during the Third Great Ninja War. In this fight, Minato goes to attack the Raikage with his kunai and is intercepted by one of B's partial transformations, which he manages to cut in half. This is an impressive feat as B felt Minato was going to hurt his brother, or else why would he intervene? But the fact he was able to cut through a partial transformation tentacle from B is very impressive as he's basically cutting in half one of the eight tails limbs here. Now some people might argue this would not scale properly as the partial transformation was tiny and would not be scaled to the full avatar, but I think that's a moot point as the fact of the matter is, is even if you want to argue it's smaller, it doesn't change the fact that it should be just as durable. As well, A should be stronger than B here, and Minato is going to pierce A's lightning cloak with his kunai, so again, it's a moot point. The next feat for Minato is defeating a young Obito. This Obito got one-shotted by the Rasengan deliver from Minato. And to those who think he tanked it, I want you to ask yourself a question. Would you say someone tanked something if they got their arm torn off by it? Because Naruto tore off Kaguya's arm and people think he did significant damage to her. So why would we assume Obito tanked Minato's Rasengan when he did the same thing to him? As well, he was able to figure out and assess Kamui and figure out how it works and come up with an effective counter for it just by seeing it once. This is a very good IQ feat, but there's one more interesting feat as well. Minato, when he sealed away the Nine Tails for the second time after destruction of the Hidden Leaf Village by Pain, stated that he was able to see from Naruto's mind. Meaning Minato should have witnessed the Kakuzu Naruto fought, and Minato believed the Obito that he fought, the 14 year old Obito, was more dangerous than him and more dangerous than Pain. 
and he also believed that Naruto would need to master half of the Ninetales chakra to beat this version of Obito. Isn't that interesting? And this isn't even touching the Minato one shot, but we'll touch on that in another video. So what about speed? Now when it comes to speed for our resident yellow flash, he has quite a few feats to draw from. Now it's stated in the guidebooks that the Raikage speed from early in the war arc was not inferior even to the yellow flash, meaning Minato's speed should scale relative to this Raikage. This would also put him on the level of someone like KCM1 Naruto in terms of speed as the Raikage directly compares Naruto's speed to Minato's. But he became known for his flying Raijin technique, which he used to dodge Raikage during the Third Great Ninja War. The guidebooks even state he was praised among all ninja as the greatest in terms of godlike speed. So if you wanted, you might be able to make the extreme highball case that he should be above the likes of Hashirama and Mado in terms of speed, which isn't necessarily inconsistent as he was able to teleport in between 8 Gates Guy and Jubidara's true seeking orbs. But in my opinion, that's a bit of a wank without other scaling, so I'm not using it for this video. But now that we have the physical stats out of the way, who would actually win in this fight? Now, as it's shown here, it's pretty obvious that I think Minato would bulldoze through Kakuzu. I just think in terms of strength and speed, the gap is too large to ignore, as Minato just has blatantly better feats than Kakuzu. Again, this does not mean Kakuzu isn't strong. He's actually very strong, especially for when he showed up in the series. But I don't believe in putting him up against Hokage is very fair, as all of the Hokage are not the kinds of opponents for most of the Akatsuki members. But that's my video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and until we meet again, good luck in your power scouting endeavors.